Whether you're making heavy metal or hip hop, EDM or rock, at some point in time, you're probably gonna need to import a single one shot sample and use it in your project. What's going on, voiceover warriors and keyboard ninjas? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna go over how to bring in a single one shot sample, make a sample instrument out of it, and trigger it in your project. So in the instance that we're discussing today, we're gonna use a snare sample in my example, but this can be an electronic kick, an acoustic kick, a hi-hat, a clap, anything you want. You can import it into your Logic project and then use it in a sample. Now, this is a sneak peek of a course that I'm working on going into depth on producing beats with Logic. So please consider signing up for the mailing list so I can let you know when that is available. You'll be the first to be made aware of it. Also, if you want to go more in depth with some of the stuff that we didn't cover in this tutorial, visit logic.band slash training book a one-on-one -on -one session and we can take a deep dive into all things with the sampler. All right, so here we are in Logic and I got a snare sample imported. Now, if you need to import a sample, you can press Command-Shift-I and I'll bring up a standard open dialog and you can navigate to wherever the file is on your hard drive, external hard drive, etc. Or you can go to Finder, copy it, and then go back to Logic, make sure you're on the track headers and Command-V to paste and you'll paste it right into the project. Those are two ways you can import an audio file into Logic. And for more info on that, check out the tutorial on importing files into Logic. I'll put a link to that in the description below. All right, so let's interact with a track in track, header, group. Tra track one, classic electric piano. That's just a classic electric piano track that was created when I created a, a blank project to demonstrate this. Track two, cobble, cold, concrete crack. And this is the snare sample that I wanted to use for this demonstration. And if I view a space, one bar, one beat, one division, one tick. You'll hear that snare sample there. All right, so now we wanna load this up into a sampler and make this a playable instrument. So the first thing you wanna do is select the region. Now, because we only have one region on this track, I can just move off this track and back onto it. Track one, track two, cobble, cold, concrete, crack. All right, so we know we got this region selected. You can do control N and control home to verify that if you'd like. So I'm gonna do control E. Convert regions to new sampler track. So we got this new dialog that comes up and you have the option here to create a sampler instrument either from the region or using transients. Create zones from regions selected, radio button, one of two. So you see we have regions selected. Transient markers, radio button, two of two. And transient markers is the other option. Transient markers is useful if you have a loop and you want to kind of chop that loop up so you can trigger a different part of that loop with a different key on your keyboard. In this instance where we are working with a single one shot instrument, a kick, a snare, a clap, whatever, we're going to leave it on region. Instrument. Sampler. Selected. Radio button. One of three. So you have the option here to select the sampler, which is what's selected by default. Drum machine designer. Radio button. Two of three. You can use drum machine designer. Alchemy. Radio button. Three of three. Or alchemy. Create one shot zones. Check. Checkbox. All right, so if you want the sample to play the entire sample every single time you press the key on your keyboard, then you wanna leave one shot. If you want the sample to cut off the second you let go of the key on your keyboard, then you want to uncheck this one shot thing. So because this is a snare, we're gonna leave one shot checked. Instrument name. Cobble cold concrete crack. Content selected. Edit text. So this gives the instrument a name based on the file name. So in this case, this does work, but I also like to put what note I'm going to assign it to in the name of the instrument. So I'm going to edit this a little bit. So I'm just going to use the right arrow, jump to the end here. Cobble, K, K. Space. And I'm just going to put in the... Left parenthesis. This is a snare. So I'm going to make D this D1, one, which is... Hyphen, three, eight. Right parenthesis. Right, there we go. So I just typed that in. Trigger note range. All right. So now this is the part where you get to pick what note is going to trigger this. C2, zero, pop-up button. And this is actually C minus two. Interact with the C hyphen two. Stop interacting with. That's C minus two. And that's like the lowest of the lowest note on an 88 key keyboard. G8 127, pop-up button. And you see this is gonna be at G8 127. So if you don't want it to be that low down on your keyboard, you can actually change your range. And because this is just one sample, you only need to set it to be triggered by one note. So like I said, I wanna set this to D1, which is kind of the MIDI standard for snare drum. I'm gonna VO left. C2, zero, pop-up button. To the first one, C2. Menu 128 items check mark, C2, zero. 
or C minus two. I'm gonna VO down arrow through this list. C mute D mute F F mute G eight A mute B two C one C mute D one D music sharp sign minus one D one fourteen D mute E one F one F mute G one G mute A one A music B one C zero twenty C music sharp sign zero D zero twenty six D mute E F F mute G music A zero A music B zero C one thirty C music D one thirty eight. All right, so D1, Press D1, 38, D1, 38, G8, 127. Pop up and button. I'm going to VO space on this and also set this to D1, 38. I don't have to do this because there's only one sample, so it's just going to trigger on D1, and it's not going to really make a difference here, but I just, for the sake of consistency, like to set that to the same note as well, since it's only one sample, so VO space. Menu 1, F music sharp, F music sharp, F5, A, B, D. C2, C music sharp, C music sharp, sign D1, D music sharp, sign 1, D1, 38. There we go. Press D1. All right. So now I got those set to the same thing. And the last thing we got to do here is it. Okay. Okay. Creates an instrument with cancel. But okay. Default. Okay. Default button. All right. Tracks contents. Group. And now this created a track for us. Track two. Cobble cold concrete crack. Tracks header. Group. Tracks contents. Group. Sometimes after you close that window, you don't always see your tracks right away. So what you can do is just hit. Now in DS. Command one to open a new copy of the main window. I'm going to command accent. Now in DS. Back to the old one and close it with command W. Tracks contents. All right. So tracks now, contents. Tracks header. Group. If I interact with the tracks, tracks header. header. Group. Track three. Cottle. Cold concrete crack. D1-38. And that's the other reason why I like to kind of edit the name a little bit. Because if I didn't, you'll see the original audio track that you imported. Track two. Cottle. Cold concrete crack. That's track two. And track three. Track three, Cottle, Cold Concrete Crack, D1-38. Which is a sampler instrument version. They would have the same exact name. So I like to edit the name a little bit so I can tell which one is a sampler instrument right away. And now you can verify that this one is the sampler instrument because you can trigger this from your keyboard. And I'm going to bring up the MIDI typing keyboard here. Command K. Musical typing, Cottle, Cold Concrete Crack, D1-38, dialog. You may have to go down an octave. Yep, there we go. So I'm hitting the D1 key to trigger that. So now I'm going to jump into the mixer for a second because I'm going to save this in the sampler. So I'm going to do command two. Now in DS, mixer, tracks, window, small room slash zero, cottle, cold concrete crack, D1-38, partially hidden, channel strip groove. All right, interact with that. In cottle, cold concrete crack, D1-38, partially hidden, channel strip groove. And I'm going to use VO home to jump to the top of this channel strip. Setting, button. And once again, VO FN, a left arrow. Off. Gain reduction meter. Switch. Now I'm using VO right to navigate to the field where the sampler instrument is instantiated. Off. Eat MIDI plugin. Sampler. Groove. There we go. Sampler. So that is the virtual instrument here on this track. I'm going to interact In with sampler, this. Open. Button. Go to open. Cottle. Cold toolbar. Button. Cottle. Cold toolbar. But bypass. Chat. User default. Pop up button. So this thing that says user default or factor default or whatever, you want to VO space on this. Menu. Setting. Undo. Redo. Include. Next. Preview. Copy. Pay. Load. Save. Dim. Save as ellipsis. And go to save as. Close. Save as. Save sampler instrument as. Dialog. Save as. Save sampler instrument as. Dialog. Cough back. Dim. But cottle. Cold concrete crack. D1-38. Content selected. Save as. Edit text. So I'm um, just going to leave that as a file name. Back. Dim. Forward. Dim. Group. Men. New folder. Sampler instruments. Where? Pop up button. All right. And it's going to save it in sampler instruments inside your audio music apps inside your home folder in the music folder. I'm going to continue navigating through this window with VO right. Show less off. Search text. Sidebar. Table. Vertical splitter. Column view. Browse. Save with audio data. Check. Checkbox. I'd recommend checking this so that it saves a copy of the actual audio file. That way, in the future, there's less chances of you having to point it to the sample. Or if you're traveling and don't have the external drive with your samples on you, then it will have the sample saved on your local machine. New folder. Button. Cancel. Button. Save. Button. All right. And just view right arrow over to save. You know, view space on that. Press save Button. Cottle. Cold concrete crack. D1-38. All right. And now we can close this now window. Now in DS. Mixer. Tracks. Window. Open. Button. And we're going to close the mixer as well. Command W. Tracks contents. Group. DS. Tracks. With tracks contents. Group. Now, I just want to let you know that when you create the sampler instrument, it does create a MIDI region with one note on there. If I do control home and end, two bars, one beat, one, one bar, one beat, one division, one tick. You see there's a MIDI region there, and if I hit space, one bar, one beat, one division, one tick. You just heard it play that sample. So just be aware that if you want to start recording with the sample, there is already a MIDI region on that track, so you might want to delete it. You can just tap the delete key to get rid of that. And now you can hit record and start playing something with the sample. So I'm going to bring up the musical typing keyboard again. Musical typing, cottle, cold concrete crack, D1-38, dialog. And hit record. One bar, right. one beat, one division, one tick. Space. I'm going to get rid of the musical typing keyboard. Command K. Tracks contents. Group. Tracks header. Group. And now if I hit space. 
One bar, one beat, one division, one bar, one beat, one division, one two. Quantize select. And now if I hit space. One bar, one beat. And you hear that recording that I just made there. All right, so that's using samples. And we'll get to using the quick sampler so you can pitch your samples up and down across the keyboard. There's a couple different ways to get stuff in and out of the quick sampler. And we'll be taking a look at that in a future tutorial as well. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for checking this out. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by making a donation at paypal.me slash logic.band. Link in the description below. You can also get some one-on-one -on -one training if you want to dive deep in any of these topics surrounding Logic. Or if you're new to Mac and want to get up to speed with voiceover. You can visit logic.band slash training for some one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And once again, there is a link to that in the description below. Also, don't forget to check the description below for a link to relevant tutorials here on YouTube and or to the blog on logic.band that has some supplemental information for this tutorial. Hope you found that useful and helpful. Please feel free to like and subscribe and share this with someone you know who's new to Logic and voiceover. As always, everyone, until next time, happy recording.